<clears throat> Hi everyone, welcome back to Retro Rust. Just working on Christine today. Just getting her all assembled back together. Just thought I'd do a quick video and explain how I adjust tappets. It's the way my dad showed me many years ago. Um, yeah, a few people may find it a lot easier if they follow it by the book. But before we get into that, she's all getting back together. We've now got the, see there, the Holly Snapper EFI. This is a beautiful piece of kit. It's injection. So in each one of these sides, if you take it off, it's got two injectors in each side. It's got all your modern stuff you need. Photo position, photo position switch, uh, auto control valve. If you look down inside the actual photo body, I can't remember which hole it's in, but there's a hole down the chamber. I assume that's the uh, the map sensor, because you can actually run boost through this. So that is brilliant, because obviously the setup that I'm going for. In order to do that. You need to run an external fuel pressure regulator that has a boost reference on it because the original on here isn't any good for boost so you have to blank that one off anyways let's get back to the tappets Right, if you're actually like me and you look in the book and try and read how it actually told you to adjust tap it, I just get confused. When it says about put this cylinder to the top of the centre, then you've got overlap on it, overlap on it, forget it. It's a waste of time. This is how my dad showed me many years ago and it works perfect. Obviously, you're going to have your base timing in your timing cover set at TDC. TDC, sorry. So you've got a big cam gear and you've got a small crank gear. Both of them have a dot which actually line up with each other. Then once it's all assembled, it's a bit hard to actually see, but on the crank pulley, you do have a notch that lines up with a notch on the timing cover. So you know you're at uh, top dead centre. Then put the rocker arms on, push rods in, rocker arms on, adjust, adjust them all down Why it is at TDC. And I'll show you on the camshaft in a minute. So you do the exhaust and the intake at the same time, why it's on TDC. That way the valves are closed and it works perfect. Here's the old camshaft. All right. As you set for TDC, what you want, here is a cam lobe and here's a lifter. That sits on top obviously with it inside the engine obviously then as it rotates it comes to the back of the camshaft where if you actually look there isn't any lobe it's just here on every single cylinder you set your valve clearance because this is the lowest point of each lobe So you set number one, then you work around in the firing order. So we've done number one, now that's perfect. We then got to rotate the crankshaft, keeping a screwdriver down inside the spark plug hole. Then as you rotate it, you'll see the spark plug, uh, spark plug, idiot. You'll see the screwdriver 
uh, appear out of the spark plug hole and then what you'll actually see is when you know you're at chop dead center for that cylinder you'll see the screwdriver moving and then it'll actually stop and what that stop part is that's the dwell that's where the valves are closed and it's just going to that that peak where it's just about to come down on its throw you stop there and that's where you set your valve clearances I've just done cylinder 4 and that's done they're perfect <clears throat> there's no point in me telling you the valve clearances that I'm using because you're going to be using a different camshaft it's also important when setting your valve clearances show you on a rocker arm that's not been installed yet obviously these are old rocker arms you've got wear as you can see here you've got wear in the middle then on the end of each um, part of the rocker arm where it doesn't actually touch the valve stem you can see that it's not worn <clears throat> so as you actually set the valve clearance it's important that you keep moving the rocker arm keep wobbling it so it moves on its ball at the bottom and it, it re-centralizes that wear mark back with the valve stem because if you don't do that as you're setting the valve clearance you're going to be setting the valve clearance on the valve stem to the rocker arm part where it's not actually worn so if you actually do that when you start it up it's going to be quite noisy so let's get on with cylinder two because that's the next part of the firing order it's dead easy when you look so number one is the, the furthest cylinder forward and it literally just goes in a zigzag all the way across right down to the bottom so we've done cylinder one done cylinder four now on cylinder two so stick the screwdriver down the spark plug hole I'm going to try and set it up so you can watch just a second but I'm not I'm not actually very happy I thought I was filming and I wasn't damn I'm hoping all the part where I try and explain I'm hoping that's filmed right I'm gonna try and explain it again briefly right. we've got the socket on the crankshaft and you're putting this the screwdriver down the spot plug hole you don't want the screwdriver to to be tilted so much that when the piston comes up it actually touches the screwdriver and snaps it you need to make sure the screwdriver is facing all the way up just enough so it can go through the hole then as you rotate the crank you can actually see the screwdriver rising right, that should be it right rotate there, right. So you can see from here, obviously, they need mega adjustment. Both of them. So I'm going to come back in a minute because I haven't got a socket on there at the moment. I've only got a spanner. So I'm going to come back in a minute once they're adjusted about right. And then I'll show you sticking the feeler gauges in. Not that the light's going to make any difference. Right, hi, welcome back. I've adjusted them about right. Um, it's going to be a bit hard with the camera in the way. But I'll try. Just got to be careful I don't knock it over. Uh, let me try and explain what I mean about you need to rock the rocker arm then you feel it sliding really nice that's because it's sat bang in the middle of where that wear mark is 
you can see it slides in really nice whereas if you just try and shove it in it won't actually go in because it's going on the two edges where the wear mark is but, but yeah if you just slightly rock it the slide in it bind in a tiny bit so that exhaust valve is perfect come to this intake you can actually see this one is way too loose you can actually move it up and down all right so let's adjust this do small movements at a time you can feel it starting to bind do a little bit more rock, rock it again and it, yeah that's too tight so loosen that back off to that little bit again Look the arm. There you go. It's finally got it. I know it's going to be hard for you to see on camera. And my arm's in the way. But I can only rest it on the inner wing. So that's... That intake and exhaust valve adjusted. Well, to what spec it apparently says it needs to be on the cam. So that's good. So we've now done one, four and two. We now need to go over to the other side and do number three. But I still need to put all the rocker arms and the studs, not sorry, on that side. So I'm gonna leave that there. I hope someone watching it's found it useful information. I say I find it a lot easier than actually looking through the book um, I just get too confused when it's going on about do this and do that and do this I was, like my dad taught me years ago I just find this loads easier so see you in the next video of Rusty or the next video of this hopefully driving later on today or tomorrow so see you in the next one